There's Marley. There's Tinkerbell. And there's today's project. Okay, so I have right here all the tools you need to go ahead and install this ignition system. You're going to need some electrical tape, you're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver, you're going to ha need a hammer, you, you might need a hammer, you're going to need a tap, six millimeter, uh, you're going to need a vice grip for crimping, um, and you're going to need it, well you might need it for taking the cap off, which you'll see what I mean later. You're, uh, you don't need a file, but you need something with a big flat end like that to be able to get the timing cover off and uh, to be able to put uh, put the inside whenever you look at it, it's going to have T1 and it's going to have a whole bunch of other ones inside the timing cover. And then you can find that by if you go to where the uh, switch is to put the gas on and you follow that that uh, the gas the gas line down to where the filter is under the tank and you look right below it there's this little cap that's angled like that and has a slot in it that's your timing cap and you can use this to stick it uh, on there and then turn it off uh, take it out and then to uh, get it to T1 the easiest thing to do is take your spark plugs out and then put it in fifth gear and then just push the back tire rotate it until you see T1 come up once you see T1, you're good. You can put the uh, the timing cover back on, screw it back in, because you're going to want to do that. Um, don't forget that. And then you're going to uh, you're going to need a ratchet set. Um, you're going to need eight millimeter, and you're going to need ten millimeter. Um, but you can get this at Lowe's for like twenty dollars. But you're going to need some type of ratchet set. You're going to need a voltmeter. You're going to need a um, a uh, some type of a drilling. I'm using this one. Um, I put the tape on there to show me how far I need to drill into the camshaft. If you go to Sears, you can get a six millimeter drill and tap. It comes with both of these, this and that, in one package. Um, this I bought separately. Um, then you're going to need um, you're going to need an Allen wrench. I suggest highly that you get the the lubricant so when you're tapping you just put the lubricant on this tap and it will just go in easy. You're going to need some wire and you're going to use, I'm using a Gerber to strip the wire with. Um, and then those are all the tools that you should need to be able to install this. Okay, so here's our project today which is to uh, fix the uh, the motorcycle and I ordered from uh, C5 Ignition, the um, a package for my um, my Goldwing. So here we go. I'm I'm looking at the directions and I got a few things down. So I'm just gonna go with you what I got down. So you're gonna get this out of the out of the box. You're gonna line it up with. Um, there's two little holes with. Um... All right, there they are. Two little holes. And um, you're just going to plop it down like that. You're going to need these first. So when you get on the bike, you're going to find, you're going to unscrew the um, the first cap, which we're going to go do. And we're going to put these in wherever these go. So then what we're going to do is grab these and this. Plop it down right there over the hole. We're gonna go ahead and screw it down. Dude, I'm sorry it's dark outside, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take off all the all of the. Uh, you need to take off this part. You need to take off. You don't have to take it off, but this pops off. Excuse me. This pops off. Um, I usually just flip the side like that, and so you need to grab all this stuff out. Uh, I don't see any screws there, I don't know why it's being, oh I do see screws. The uh, ignition coils are located 
under here. So we gotta pull this whole thing off. So there goes that. I'm just gonna lay that carefully right there. And uh, now you can access bolts. So you're gonna take the bolts off and this whole thing will slide off. There's also a bolt right here. Uh, you can't see, but there's a bolt right uh, right there. So you pull the side part off, it says gold wing. There's a few bolts up there. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that off and I'll be right back. Okay, so uh, you can see that the uh, it's gone. So is the seat. I ended up having just to take the seat off. If you've never taken the seat off, um, there's, you pop this up and then inside here is a little, you know, like a push spring. You gotta push the spring in. Oh, sorry about that. You push the spring in, and uh, it's right here. You push the spring in, and you pop it up, and then you're able to take the seat off. So uh, after you take the seat off, you should be able to uh, access the pulse generators, which actually are right under this. Right under this. So we gotta pop this off and then get underneath that. Okay, I know it's kind of hard to see, but uh, there's two bolts holding this on right there. So I just unbolted it and then just uh, moved it to the side. Make sure you put all of your bolts and you know and screws in a safe spot and remember which ones go where. All right, so next, the pulse generator or not the pulse generator is the um, ignition coils. There's a uh, there's one bolt right here and then right above it. And so then I'm just gonna unscrew or uh, unbolt those, and all these are mil 10 millimeter screw uh, bolts. So then that should just be able to pop down, and then I can pull it out. It is a little bit difficult to pull it out, but it'll be done. Okay, so I figured out how to wire this. What we do is uh, this is how I put it up. I um, just screwed it upside down to this. And I twisted the red wires together and the black wires together. So this is how it gets wired. This goes directly to the battery. So you bring the wire up and uh, put it to this. And they provide a little. Um, they provide these for you. So you just go ahead and crimp that on, crimp them together. This goes to the positive battery. Now um, it suggests, and then. This goes to the negative part to the battery. So then uh, what they suggest you do is it says the, um, the coil which triggers uh, the black wire must be operated on the front two cylinders. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna have, uh, I have this facing like that and I'm just gonna remember it by the black wire is this one. So it's the front cylinders because this one faces forward and the back two cylinders are this one because it faces back. I don't know which one of these is uh, still on the left or the right, but I'm going to try left and right, and if it doesn't work, I'll just switch them. Um, so, and the same with this, I'm going to try. This is the back left, and I'm going to try this is the back right. Um, so the black wire will be this one, and the white wire is this one. Now, which one is that? This is part of the... Um, part of this. So let me bring it to the light. So there's your red wire. You're going to connect this red wire to um, to the kill switch um, or yeah the kill switch. Figure out which, uh, where it is and so when it's switched off there's no power to it and then it switch, when it's switched on there is power. And here's the black wire so that's going to be on the left one the left, um, this is going to be on the that uh, left of the pulse, the the coils. Here is the red, the blue, and the brown, and I'm just going to ground those. Um, and then here's the white, so that's going to be on the right. And this is the green, that's going to be connected to the tachometer. So your motorcycle knows how fast uh, it's the RPM is. So that's that. And so I'm going to go ahead and go out there and put this on there and we'll see if it all works. All right, step one, remove, remove the gas. 
And then right back there is the timing cover, so we're gonna take that off. All right, I used this to get down in there and just slip into the slot and turn it, and it actually popped off really easy. All right, so there's your timing. Could you angle it right there for me? Thank you, there's your timing. And inside there, just for a second. Um, inside there, you can't really see it, but inside, there we go, there's a little notch, and we're gonna turn it until it says T, D. Okay, after taking the spark plugs out and rotating the motor to T, T, T1, I, uh, ready to take this cap off. I'm gonna go ahead and take out this. It's a little rubber gasket. I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in, and then put that on top of it. Alright, so I finally got it out. I had to drill a hole in it, three of them, and then uh, put a screwdriver in, pop it out. Okay, sorry for the cutoff, but uh, it's so cold outside that uh, it actually killed my battery, um, or froze my phone, something like that. So anyways, I had to run to Sears real quick and get a uh, six millimeter uh, tapping set so this screw can tap in there. I thought it came tapped, but it didn't, so make sure you guys get that. Um, so I'm on my way back to the bike and it is ridiculously cold. I think it's like 17 degrees or something. So uh, anyways, um, I got some tapping oil because you just have to play it safe with the camshaft. You can't, can't screw around with that. Um, it comes with a screw, or not a screw, but it comes with a, uh, comes with a, um, a drill bit so you don't have to worry about getting the wrong drill bit. Um, or having the wrong one. Um, but the kit comes with this bolt, the six millimeter bolt. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill that hole in the camshaft, uh, tap it, and then we should be set to go. Okay, this is an old trick my dad taught me. You measure the bolt up with how, uh, how long you need it, and then you put a piece of tape at uh, where you need to stop. So uh, there's the shaft, there's a hole in it, and I'm gonna drill that hole to make sure it's the right size. Okay, so I uh, drilled a hole in it, and I do not recommend what I'm doing. I used a hand drill, and I drilled it like this. I looked on top, it looked like it was 90 degrees straight. Looked on the side, looked like it was straight, drilled in a little bit. Looked up at the top, looked up at the side, straight, drilled in a little bit, all the way till it was that red mark. I do not recommend that because you don't know if it's straight or not. And then you put some of that drill tapping oil in there, push with some force, turn it very gently, and then you just turn it a little bit. So push, turn, turn, push, and you, you don't ever want to stretch your hand like that. Make sure you got a good grip and that you're twisting the right way and everything. And it should just glide through there like it's not even cutting metal. Now that's if you put that lube in there you'll be good to go. And make sure also when you first start the cut, it's straight, it's straight, push and turn a little bit, straight, it's straight, push in, turn a little bit, it's straight, it's straight. Once you get in there a little bit, you can just kinda go at it. It'll, it'll kinda self-tap itself. But you still really have to be careful. And you wanna take note how far you're pushing it in, because you don't wanna get it all the way in there and then not know how far you're going so just be wary of that I'll go ahead and take this out really quick be ever being ever so careful and there it is cutting and let's see how far it should be it should be in there a ways before it stops so blow it out a little bit maybe throw a little bit of more of that lube on there and you're good to go Okay, I went ahead and put this in. I just uh, tapped it lightly with a hammer and then with a center punch around here till it's nice and flat. And I'm going to go ahead and install the metal plate. Okay, I had to cut and drill a little hole in this gasket because it just wasn't the right, the holes weren't positioned quite right. So that's okay, I got it to work. Okay, bolts are on and uh, gasket's behind there. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put on the rest of it. 
Okay, so what I did is I uh, I went ahead and put that, that really long brass spacer inside. Um, then I put, there's a washer, uh, a metal washer, then there's a cap that goes, a brass cap that goes inside of it. And then I put the bolt through and just kind of thread it in, put uh, a couple times so it stays on there. Then I went ahead and put uh, these in there. I put this on t these screws inside of it so I wouldn't lose them. So just be very careful with that little metal disc because it is unbelievably delicate. Do not bend it. All right, so what I did is I undid this, just three screws at the bottom, and inside there's two little screws for the kill switch. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get in there and I'm just gonna put one wire on one of these screws and one wire on the other one. So, and I'm gonna bring him back out and then bring him back around and that'll be my power. So I can kill it and turn it off and turn it back on. Okay, so uh, I brought these out of the, uh, the little switch terminal here. And uh, this one has a constant flow of voltage. This one does not. Whenever you switch it off, that one has no power. So that's what I'm gonna use for my all power and uh, all no power. Alrighty, I've got this wired up. The red one is to the kill switch. And then the uh, red one, the red power comes to the, that way for the battery. The reason I didn't put it on this is because I didn't know I didn't want all of that coming from one little switch in there. So in a way, I made a mistake, but that's okay. It'll just be hidden. And I've got uh, this going to the negative. Um, it's just the um, it's the the black wires on the coils, uh, just all kind of wrapped up with uh, the brown and the blue wire. And I did that just to kind of splice it because I made a mistake. You know, the uh, the green wire, I'm not going to worry about that. The white one is for the right pull, the right uh, coil. The black one is for the left coil. The left one is powering the front two cylinders. And the white one is powering the, uh, the back cylinders. <laughs> okay, so I just switched the power on. And uh, I got this little red light coming on, and I tightened it. I had to uh, back it off a little bit for the little thing, then I had to tighten it till it got in there, and then it then it presented with that little bright LED light. So all my wiring is correct. Okay, so what I had to do is I had to actually cut off the top of the old one, which you can't see, uh, but. Uh, and I had to just strip this outer black coating off, which left the light white one. And I just screwed this in there because it has a little screw in there. And so then we can go ahead and just push this in. All right, there it is. Back together in one piece.